Welcome back to The Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. I know it's been a few months since I produced an episode, but during that time I've tweaked my system a little more. I added this new turntable, this Thorns back here, that was built by Dave at Vinyl Nirvana, and a new pair of Klipsch speakers. I think you can probably see one of them over here. These are the 600 M2s. Next, well, somewhere down the road, uh, I have my eyes set on a Prima Luna tube amp. One can only dream, right? Anyway, I thought I'd do things a little different over the next few episodes. Since the last one, I've received quite a lot of questions from folks both here at the channel and also through the website's contact form. Some questions are from folks that are new to vinyl, and some also from those who have been collecting for years. In all cases, I love the questions and hearing about others' experiences. So let's start with this one. This one is from Mark. Mark writes, or Mark asks, is burn-in, or does burn-in for your equipment improve the sound? That's a good question. What Mark is asking about is the idea or the concept of burn-in. It's a controversial one, as is really most everything when it comes to audio equipment. But Mark, I'm glad you asked. So what is burn-in actually? Well, some believe equipment, especially high-end amps or speakers, need time to settle in and for their components to quote-unquote burn in to achieve the sound that they were meant to have. Now, is that a real thing? Well, some folks say no. It's just a myth. Their feeling is that it's all in the mind of the listener. As you listen to a certain sound, you become accustomed to it. And given enough time, you end up preferring it. Are preferring the sound. Think of a song you may have once disliked. Maybe a, a new song from a favorite band that you weren't sure about at first. After repeated listens, that song starts to grow on you. And before you know it, you love it and you're humming it everywhere you go. Burnin', like, or burnin', the skeptics will say, is like that. Your ears get used to it. It's not the equipment settling in, it's you. Now, do I think burn-in period is necessary to get the system's full potential? Well, yes, I do. And do I have proof of that? Well, no, <laughs> I don't. I have to admit it, I don't. I will say it makes sense with higher-end audio speakers like amps and especially tube amps uh, and speakers in particular. You take it out of the box, you plug it in, and you run electric current and vibrations through the components for the first time. It allows them to become more flexible, like the suspension system where the cone attaches to the frame. It's stiff out of the box. Now think of it like a, a new pair of jeans. They're stiff at first, and after repeated wears, they become more comfortable and more flexible. Now, is this the case with all speakers? Perhaps, but it will be more noticeable with larger speakers as opposed to, say, you know, smaller bookshelf speakers. The thing is, the argument against burn-in may actually be used against the argument, specifically the argument that says your ears get used to it and that it's all in your mind. That might be true, your ears do get used to it, but in reverse. With burn-in, it's not a drastic change after the first time you plug them in. It's only after repeated use. The change is gradual and it's hard to notice. Your ears are used to it, and they don't really pick up on the small day-to-day -day changes. Like when a flower blooms, it doesn't unfold all at once. It takes time, and before you know it, what started as a bud is now a flower. The way to notice it, or to notice the sound, would be to take two new pairs of speakers, say all things being equal, and use one pair for six months, and then compare them. In fact, there are high-end speaker manufacturers who will purposely burn in their speakers for maybe 48 to 72 hours before shipping them for this very reason. Many speakers and equipment come with 30-day guarantees, and they don't want their customers, or the first to listen that their customers have, to be a negative one. So again, I'm not a speaker manufacturer, nor do I work for one and I'm certainly not an electrician. I'm simply someone who loves analog equipment and the nuances that come with it. Now, could I be wrong about all of this? Of course I could, but I love the conversation. And speaking of conversations, subscribe to the show. Just click here, I think somewhere around here. And until next time, 
please take care of yourself and enjoy your records.